Hey guys, welcome back to the Chesnoid FC save here on FIFA 22. We're getting very close to the end of the season and as you can see, some other teams have played an extra game than us now. We've had to wait till the Wednesday to play our game against Chelsea, who are, well, only six points behind us and uh, could be less should they beat us today. So certainly want to get uh, a victory if we can at the very least, avoid defeat, meaning we'll go back into that fourth spot. Would then be three points clear of Manchester City. Uh, all the goal difference would certainly be in their favour. But hopefully we can pip Liverpool up to that fourth spot. We still have Liverpool to play in the remainder of the season. Manchester United as well. Today it will be Chelsea at home, Norwich away and Southampton at home. Before tomorrow, City, Newcastle and Leicester. And then the day after that we'll be ending the season. And hopefully ending the season in a European spot. You guys have given me some advice about what to do with regards to one of my board objectives. The uh, brand exposure one, no, not the brand exposure one, the financial one is sell two players and sign two crucial players to replace them, which we've done. Four of four complete, but it says finish the season without any unspent transfer budget. Obviously, we didn't spend everything, but you guys have told me that I can kind of cheat the system a little bit by putting all of my available money into my wage budget. So it says zero transfer budget, and that kind of fools the game into thinking we've left no unspent transfer budget. Uh, in our allocation this season. So I'll try that. If it works, bingo. You guys have absolutely nailed it. Thank you for helping me get an extra tick. But at the very least, we're going to be finishing, hopefully, in some sort of European competition or European competition paying position this season. Whether that be Champions League, Europa League or Europa Conference League remains to be seen. But Chelsea first, one game at a time. One episode at a time, and hopefully the results will come from there. No, not locked player. What are you doing, Tess? I want to change the kits. Drop the video a like if you enjoy. Make sure you continually send me your kit suggestions for the next season. Either via Twitter or via an Instagram DM. I'm looking forward to seeing all of your submissions and we'll, of course, select both of them at the beginning of the next season. But for now, time to take on Chelsea at home. Drop the video a like if you're enjoying this save continually. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more. Season 6 isn't very far away. But we need to make sure we finish Season 5 strong. Edouard Mendy in goal for Chelsea. Reese James, Jason Denier, Upa Meccano, Ibanez and Ben Chilwell. Kai Havertz and Mason Mount in the middle. Callum Hudson-Odoi, Alexander Isak and Christian Pulisic. We've got a 90-rated Federico Chiesa on the bench. Alex Tellez, Mauro Icardi also there as well. New signing Brian Brobby is on the bench as well, although I hope he doesn't come on. I don't want to stumble over his name 17,000 times. Let's see what we can do against Chelsea. It was no name, no number, no problem for Henry Cox yesterday. He's grown to 81 rated. You guys are loving the impact he's having on the starting lineup since Randy and Tekka's injury, certainly forcing his way into the picture for when Randy gets back, that's for sure. Hopefully we can see some continued growth from him for the remainder of the season. And you never know, Henry Cox might be our new first team permanent partner for Amin Gouiri, who continues to be the league's top goal scorer with, I think, 23 so far. A number away from a number of, a number of others that are trying to close him down. Tries to squeeze it around the corner. Kirantini says no. Kasun says he wants that back as well. That went well. Henry Cox out to Kasun. Okay, out to Gawiri. Out to Kasun. Reese James trying his best to track back. And he's quick ish, Reese James, but not quick enough here. That's going to fall beautifully for Lewis Ferguson to fire narrowly wide. I had to hit it first time, otherwise, it would have been closed down quickly and the shot would have been blocked. And that happens a lot to Lewis Ferguson. But he misses the target narrowly there. Really not far away at all. Still contemplating replacing Lewis Ferguson in the starting lineup with Jude Bellingham next season, provided he hasn't moved on from Fiorentina yet, which I don't believe he has. But we'll have to wait and see how things pan out over future transfer windows. Right now, I can't think about transfers. All I've got to do is get the ball in the back of the net here against Chelsea. It's CFC versus CFC. So far, it's nil-nil. Away, please. Is Alexander Isak. Oh no, Plissic. Jaden Bogle fell over. Lacroix. Ah, get out, please. That would have been comical. Well, up Henry Cox. That was very well won. To Rodrigo. Cox has gone, but I don't fancy him in a battle for strength against a couple of big Chelsea defenders. 
It's one area where Henry Cox doesn't excel yet. He's got great pace. His finishing is getting better. His dribbling is getting better. But his physicality is still pretty suspect. But he is only like five foot nine or something like that. He's not a massive guy. So it's probably an area that he never will excel at. And we, that means we have two smaller strikers. So I don't know. I don't know how things are going to pan out for him. But if he keeps bagging the goals, then he'll force his way into the starting lineup to stay long term, won't he? Ten minutes to go in this first half. Continually having to deal with Chelsea throwing the ball into the box from set pieces. But so far, he says, holding his breath as they're still on the attack. We're keeping them at bay. It's James into the middle and Kessier will win that header. It's not the best. Henry Cox does really well just to put Kai Havertz off. And now a counter-attack could be on. I mean, Guiri's with me. Look at Rodrigo. He's the man I'm looking for. Eventually off Guiri. Oh, but it's over here. Havertz over the top. Win that, please. Well up, Kieran Tierney. Kasun essentially there to Henry Cox. <sighs> Around the corner, but picked off. And Isak. Gets that out to Callum hudson Adoy. Chelsea looking for a goal to go in front right on the brink of half-time. They might find it here if they can find a through ball. Pulisic does find Mason Mount in through that gap, but the defence continually stands strong. 0-0 at half-time as Arsenal take the lead in their game. I think if there are a number of other games being played here, they're not. It's just Arsenal-Fulham, so it's the other game in hand. This is the game in hand. Arsenal are winning theirs. We need really to win ours. But at the minute, we're doing enough to get us back into fourth by avoiding defeat. But obviously, the win would be preferable. Lissak, Pulisic blocked well. I start the second half. Well, we had them on the back foot for portions of that first 45. See Lewis Ferguson just loitering on the edge again. Oh, it very nearly fell to Henry Cox. I'm going to replicate our first chance of the first half here at the beginning of the second, but wasn't to be. Another goal at Craven Cottage. Oh, Fulham have equalised. That's good news. I presume they've equalised and they weren't 2-0 down prior to that goal going in. No, it is 1-1 now. Go on, Fulham. Keep that up, please. But Arsenal start dropping points as well. It offers up, offers up the opportunity to... Oh, nice turn. To potentially catch another of those top four sides. This will put us... Above, ah, I shouldn't have sprinted there. This will put us above Liverpool. Should we... Oh, keeps... Hold on to the nil-nil draw. Or just any draw. Well, I don't know why he's looped that like that. But, I mean, I guess it kept it away from everybody. So, I mean, we have the outside of outside chances of putting up a challenge for the Premier League title this season. But it would be the most unlikely of scenarios and would require a number of results to go our way between now and the end of the season. But you never know. Oh, trying to find a gap in the defence, Derek Ray, but a gap just won't appear. I am going to have to make some changes here because we've got a game coming up in the not-too-distant future at the weekend that we're going to need to be fit for. Poked at wide to Ben Chilwell. Jaden Bogle trying to slow him up. Chris Ferguson seemed rather uninterested in that, but as soon as I took control of him, he was interested in putting a stop to it. Kessier to Lewis Ferguson. He's on the run there, Kasun. Oh, and Reese James tucked in narrow, and that might let us in if Jason Denier wasn't so bloody fast. It's a terrible shot from Kasum, but under such pressure from such a tall, physical man, there's no surprise, really, that he was slightly put off his shot. Ten minutes to go now. Could have been the opportunity that won us the game. Unfortunately, it wasn't. They've just brought on, previously mentioned, 90-rated Federico Chiesa to try and win it for them here late on. And if they can get the ball out to him on this right-hand side, he will stand a very good chance of doing that for them because he's bloody deadly. But they've been kept to minimal chances so far this game. And hopefully there aren't many more between now, or any more, really, between now and the final whistle. Alexander Isak going off from Mauro Icardi coming on. So another offensive change for Chelsea in these last few moments. Is it to be enough to see them win the game? Hopefully not. Nice clearance, actually. See how high their back line is when they're on the attack there, Chelsea. They keep the numbers back, but the numbers are sat very, very high. And there is the potential to try and get in behind, as we've seen a number of times there. Mason Mount, understandably, picking up a yellow card for that. Take this short there to 
Fardiol through there to Kasun, who's turned Jason Denea well, but for the second time can't get away from the big man. Amin Gawiri looking for Kasun. Jason Denea is such a good defender with just meta stats, pace, strength, and just a, just a massive frame, to be completely honest. No, not now, please, Christian. If you don't mind, Mr. Polisic, get out. Very, very nearly, very nearly a late Chelsea winner. But a nil-nil draw at Patreon Park. Fans, I'm not sure if they were sounding appreciation or frustration there, but, I mean, I'm happy enough with that. Three shots apiece, not a massively entertaining game of football. Arsenal also drop points. But that will move us back into the top four. And now with sides like Norwich to play. It's got to be wins, right? It's got to be... What? I'd say I'm disappointed we didn't keep clean sheet. I just did that out of muscle memory, considering it wasn't a negative one. Uh, that was weird. We did keep a clean sheet. It was nil bloody nil, mate. Both sides caught a kept a clean sheet. I might have misread that. Or I might have got it spot on. You know what FIFA's like. Norwich and... Was it Fulham? No, Southampton. We've done a Fulham for the rest of the season. Don't know where I got Fulham from. Norwich away, Southampton at home. Norwich are currently 15th. Southampton are... 7th. Oh, much higher than I thought. 7th. We have a game in hand on them. We have a game in hand on the majority of the bottom half of the table. But it's the top half of the table that we're trying to get ahead of. A point clear of Liverpool, five points behind Manchester United, seven points behind Arsenal and Spurs. North London lead the way. But there's still nine games left. Could all change. At Carra Road, Norwich have Barta in goal. Barley Mumba, Rocky Bashiri, Ben White and Jakob Sørensen. Matthias Svanberg sat holding with Javier Diaz, Kieran Dow, Tocatwell and Michael Pierce ahead of him with Romano Pastema up top. Pachetta on the bench as an attacking option. Chancel and Bemba on the bench as a defensive option. It's not a strong team, but they're 15, so they're at least not in the relegation zone. I don't know how close they are to the relegation zone, but certainly they're not in it at this stage of the season, which I'm sure Norwich fans in real life would bite your hand off for if you said that they could finish 15th this year in the Premier League. Oh, that's nasty from centre mid, right off from the off. Yeah, it was Kieran Dahl. I didn't think it looked like Todd Cantwell. Fadio out to Rodrigo, around the corner to Tierney, into the middle, and Bashiri away. Can I win that with Kieran Tierney? No, never mind. Five minutes in, Dow on a yellow already, which is going to make him a little bit more cautious in the tackle for the remainder of the game, which will do us favours. But for now, you can see the top four as it stands top left prior to kickoff. So it looks similar with the positions post kickoff, or sorry, post full-time whistle, but perhaps the points gaps aren't quite so much. Come here, into Cox. Here comes Jaden Bogle. Nice. Henry Cox there on the edge of the box. Let it fly on your left, pal. Ooh, not bad. Good save by Barter. Henry Cox giving it a good old go. Delivered in. Who's going to get to that? The goalkeeper. To Kessier. Gone for me there again. Really poor from Norwich. You expect better of Premier League players, really, to just lunge in like that. Lewis Ferguson will look for a teammate. Henry Cox leaps over the ball, but it's away from him. Pierce. Can Ferguson get to that? He can. And he's kept his feet, too. That was really well done. Kessier. Ferguson to Henry Cox. Gawiri's making the run. It's a poor pass, though. Rodrigo, apparently the player to watch. He did grab a goal yesterday. Or two. Hoping he can grab some more today. Lewis Ferguson, though, is doing some defensive work for me today. Ah, not that uh, Lacroix is actually doing him any favours whatsoever in actually maintaining that defensive work. It's absolutely atrocious, getting in the way of his teammate. Kieran Dowell to Todd Cantwell. Thankfully, Best makes the save. Otherwise, we could have been 1-0 down and it would have been a little bit embarrassing. Todd Cantwell with the corner. Whipped in. Pierce knocks it down. White with the fancy scorpion kick. Pass Ferguson in the way, but still they try and work it. Norwich questions of offside there, nothing given. Kieran Dow to Svanberg and a big save from Teo Bess again to ensure that they don't take the lead. Norwich City away, please. Well, up Kessier away again, please. 
dangerous. Don't like it. Dangerous. Don't like it. Dangerous. Don't like it. Dangerous. Don't like it. I like my goalkeeper though. Because he's very good. Thankfully. And Gawiri. Bogle again. Pull back to the edge of the box. To I mean, Gawiri. Oh, keeper. But fumbled it. And very nearly fluffed it straight to a striker. For a moment there, I thought I was going to nip in. And steal it away and poke it home for a 1-0 lead. Get to that Jaden. Well up. Rodrigo bring it down. Look for Gawiri. Going to drive at the defence. Cause them problems. Then look for Rodrigo through that gap. And look for... Oh, Henry Cox was such a good ball. Definitely the right idea to try and lift that into him. He has the bicycle kick trait, does Henry Cox. So we could see some superb acrobatics from him in some games this season. We've, see, we've seen it in a more recent game where his acrobatic attempt was well saved by the goalkeeper. It just so happened to fall straight to Kasun, who tucked home a third in that given game. I think it was the Leeds game, but... Oh. Very, very nearly. Oh, and I moved my defender the wrong way there. Very, very nearly giving us the opportunity to take a 1-0 lead in this game. Come on, up we go, please, Lacroix. Oh, it's hit Svanberg and then it's hit Kessier, but it's going to fall away for me. Gawiri, Rodrigo, just around the outside of Sarenson. So I'll look for Cox. I'll look for Gawiri first. Okay, I'll look for Cox first. Meant for Gawiri. Oh, Gawiri nearly ran the wrong way. Now Rodrigo is getting into the box. Here's Gawiri, Lewis Ferguson, out to Kasun. Henry Cox is there. He spun away from the defender. Henry Cox! Kasun looking to lift it into the middle. Oh, Rodrigo was there to try and turn it home, but it just won't quite fall for me in the Norwich City box at the minute. Getting close to an opening goal of this game. Around the corner, it's a lovely ball into Postema. Oh, I did catch him there when going for the ball. It was slightly loose, thankfully... Stayed on his feet, otherwise we could have given away a penalty to Norwich there. That was dangerous. Dowell inside, Svanberg to Postema. Diaz, nice tackle. Kasun. oh no, over hit, overplayed pass looking for the man that was stood next to him. Postema, good save by Teo Bess again. Norwich putting the pressure on and making a change as well. Todd Campbell to take the corner, it's Pierce that's gone off for them. And Puecheta that's on, the Polish winger. Ali Mamba will get to that first. Get it out here to Diaz. Back there to Svanberg. Number of options. Postema, good block by Lacroix. Crucial block by Lacroix. Henry Cox turns well. Oh, look for Kasun. Found well. Oh, what is that first touch, mate? Come on. Give me a break. Jesus Christ, I'd have a better first touch than that, and I can't play football for shit. Here's Diaz in the box. And of course, that Kasun heavy touch leads to a Norwich breakaway goal. We might well lose at Carra Road. Svanberg gives them the lead with just 12 minutes to go. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe. I cannot believe Kasun's heavy touch. I've made substitutions. I've taken him off the pitch now. Oh, Rodrigo's touch lets him down. Billy Gilmore is on. Caden Clark is on. And Riley McGree is on. And hopefully... Mm, I tried to force that. Hopefully the three of them can get us something in the remainder of this fixture. Fadiol going to try and keep up with Svanberg here and stands firm well. Caden Clark looking to get away then. And continually into Rodrigo. There's Gawiri. Please, surely, 1-1 one, one. in the last seconds of the game. We've rescued a point, and that could be huge for the overall season. Losing at Carra Road would have been absolutely unacceptable. To be fair, drawing at Carra... Hello, what, what do you want, mate? Drawing at... Whoa. Drawing at Carra Road is borderline unacceptable, but at least we'll get something from the game. That very nearly was an embarrassing defeat for us. Amin Gawiri has saved our blushes. The final whistle sounds immediately after kickoff. 24 goals in 30 games. Amin Gawiri is the top goal scorer in this league for a rather evident reason. Just deadly. 
And when I needed him, he stepped up to the plate and popped the ball in the back of the net. Arsenal have Tottenham. Wow, huge game at the Emirates at the top of the table. We hope that they've drawn to keep the top of the table looking like it's still perhaps achievable. Uh, certainly a lucky break, but we are a team that never gives up. We'll take it. We have to take it. We should have taken our time. We certainly didn't underestimate. We have to learn from this. We have to learn from this. Hopefully, we can act upon our learnings and go and get a victory. Oh, Spurs won. Tottenham win at the Emirates to go clear at the top of the table by two points from Manchester United and drop Arsenal down to third. We're nine points off top now with eight games to go. It's probably too far away from us. Let's be honest, we're not going to be winning the title this season, are we? But to be up in the top four is still very, very pleasing indeed. A point clear of Liverpool. We still have Manchester United. We still have Liverpool to play this season. Southampton are in eighth place and they are our next opponents. And they're only five points behind us trying to chase down a European spot. This could be a tough game coming up next to round out today's episode. Reykjavik in goal. Kanye, Ramsey, Lianko, Ginter and Vina for Southampton at the back. Nathan Redmond, Kamara, Lo Celso and Sofian Diop with Terem Moffi and Gianluca Scamacca up top for them. Scamacca was one of the league's top goal scorers earlier in the season. Gabby Martinelli on the bench as well as Sebastian Allaire. Gabriel Paulista as an option defensively if they need one. Hopefully they will need one because we'll be battering on the door and have gotten the ball through a handful of times, hopefully. We'll just have to wait and see. But they're obviously having a decent season, Southampton, because they sat in a very good league table position and not that far away from a European spot themselves. They're basically where we thought we might be this season. We're doing slightly better than I envisaged we would do. Although, to be fair, with the squad that we have... The board certainly expected us to be where we are, or near where we are. And we hope to stay where we are, at the very least. But fingers crossed... Oh, it didn't quite go for me. Fingers crossed we can get three points here and keep ourselves in that fourth spot. Well, Moffy could start us off horribly here. Vina, he's just dribbled past me somehow. Get out. Corner for Southampton. They're five points behind us at the minute in the league. They could close that to two if they beat me. But we could open it up and really deny them any chance of catch. Oh, they're going to score, aren't they? Oh, what a block by Fadil. We could deny them any chance of overtaking us in the league this season if we get a win here. How has Skamaka made it past there? Oh, my God. Things getting a little bit scary at the back for us. But somehow I've managed to deal with it. Kessier out to Kasun. Is he going to give and go? He's gone, but I can't get it to him. We'll go this way instead. Switching it from one side to the other. Rodrigo through the gap. Hopefully taking advantage of the defender's stumble. Oh. Skipped past the first challenge, but if you'd have taken a dive, we might have taken a penalty. Well, apparently, this is my 250th game in charge. Well, it would be a fitting day for me to win then, to try and get oof, myself consolidated in the top four. 250 games in charge of a brand new football club. Not many managers get the chance to play 250, or have managed 250 games in charge of a single club, let alone a club that they've built from the ground up. 250 games already in this save. This, it baffles me that this is still the first save we've done on FIFA 21. Sorry, FIFA 22. It's normally, we're normally well into the second series that I do on uh, any given FIFA cycle, but this first save has gone so well, or at least we've been enjoying it so much, and you guys have been showing it so much love and support that it's continued on. Kessier trying to find some space, and we're finding ourselves in a hell of a journey to start the year. I already know what my next save is going to be, and I have a feeling that's going to be a bit of a journey as well, albeit uh, somewhat different to this creator club journey, but I'm sure you guys will enjoy it when it comes. But there's still plenty to do here. 250 games in charge so far. And I would imagine we'll hit 300 before we're done. Here at Chesnoid FC. Guiri with a lovely run. Looking for Henry Cox. Swept home. Chesnoid FC 1. Southampton nil. We lead in my 250th game in charge. Skamaka into Sofian Diop. Drilled really well to Moffi. Wants to go out wide. I'm quite happy for him to go out wide to Nathan Redmond. Ramsey inside to Moffi. That's a lovely little back heel, but Kirantini deals with it. 
But corner forced by the Southampton attack. Hopefully it'll be corner dealt with. Short there to Giovanni Lo Celso. Sophie and Deal delivers. Keeper's ball. Ooh, you could have caught that, pal. You can catch that one, but you can't catch the other. I don't care. The ball's not in the back of the net. Fair enough. 1 0 at half time here at home against Southampton, which is certainly a game that we hope, or a result at least, we hope to keep until the end. I'd love to make it two, though. We'll perhaps have the opportunity. Oh, through Henry Cox. But he's missed the target. Skamaka. Nice ball over the top. Sofia and Diop. Looking to get on the end of it. Sharp turn. Good dribbling. Oh, and well turned home by Moffy. Southampton didn't wait long. Post half-time team talk to get themselves level. This turn here completely done me. And then I just opened it up. I was so worried about the pullback to number 10 that I moved Lacroix out of the way, trying to cover it. And, uh, well, I then left the option open to just play it to Moffy, didn't I? Too many options for the Southampton man to pass to. And I just couldn't decide which one to, uh, to stop him getting it to. So I half made a decision. And I fully, uh, fully paid for that half decision. Rodrigo's in behind, though. And he's onside here. It's not the best to touch it, so I would have expected better from Rodrigo. Ah, oh, and I've lost possession. Guess okay, so he's trying to close up all angles. Forcing them backwards now, he says, as then they come forwards again. Moffi got a foot in there. Kamara. Celso, this is dangerous, because it's, it's situations like this where the AI just team, seem to find the little avenue for a through ball that completely cuts me open. It's when they're going sideways on the edge of my box like that that I really struggle. Gabby Martinelli coming off the bench for them now, presumably for Nathan Redmond, and indeed so why he wasn't starting, I'm not sure. Gabby Martinelli infinitely better, especially by this point in the career mode, than Nathan Redmond, but they've gone for the experience. Whilst it hasn't necessarily done them a disservice, he's not been terrible, Nathan Redmond, you would imagine. Gabby Martinelli will offer them much more. Immediately, seemingly causing more of an impact on the game than Redmond did prior to Martinelli's arrival. But he's offside there, Sofie and Diop. Jaden Bogle on the overlap. There's Gawiri. Support from Lewis Ferguson. Tucked in there, Gabby Martinelli. We use the left backs. I think Kasun just gone offside. Didn't want to risk it. Ferguson through the gap. I mean, Gawiri draws the save out of Reykjavik. Very nearly our last gasp hero once again. Making one final change. I'm going to try and get it to Guiri here at the near post. If I can, he could stand a chance. That is not the near post, is it? Or even close to it. Sometimes I wonder what the point is in having that this aiming rod, uh, module from set pieces. Because half time, it goes absolutely nowhere near where you aim it. Fardy all. Very nearly with the last touch of the game, practically. Giving us the victory. It's a... Frustrating draw against Norwich, followed by a hard fought and earned draw against Southampton. Uh, should have done better, probably. But Southampton were decent in that second half. You saw the quality of the chances they were creating. It's not a bad point, but it's equally not a good point either. But we do have Liverpool and Manchester United to, to play soon. So we have the opportunity to perhaps have the occasional indifferent result provided, provided we can ensure that we beat Liverpool and Manchester United when we play them. Liverpool on 53 behind us have the opportunity to go above us on 56 should they win their game in hand which is against Crystal Palace. So you would imagine that that will be Liverpool going up into fourth and us dropping down to fifth by the end of the weekend. And indeed it is, but still within a point of them means that it's still in our hands because we have to play them. Still in our hands with seven games to go tomorrow. Manchester City, Leicester and Newcastle. Manchester City hunting, sniffing, for a top four spot as well. Three giant games in the remaining seven against third, fourth and sixth. Still a long way to go in this season. 
but it's actually not that far. <sighs> it's going to feel like a hell of a long way, though, because we're going to have to do a lot of concentrating in the next couple of episodes. Oh, wish me luck. European football could be just around the corner. I'll see you tomorrow.